name is Sean. And I'm Dell, and you're watching Up Late with Sean Dell. Come on now. With the virus sensation of this video and Patty coming out, like other people having alternative things, what would you come up? What thing would you come up with? Uh, well, what I'm going to come up with is a uh, baby's Mother's Day card. I, I think I'm going to have to come up with a response. Debbie Dad. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do you give a Debbie Dad a card or a post-it note? Like, do you actually go? Hey, we're back and we're here with Elise Hopkins and our funny pop topic. I'll say it because Sha can't say it. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, we're here with Elise. Look, her name's Hoppin. I need my son. Dan Lover, this is my wife Vanessa, and we are up late with Cheyenne Dell. Listen, I have 5,000 Facebook followers, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm not going to see 5,000 people that day. No. But <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> One of these days, guys, we are going to fade that out perfectly. <laughs> round of applause and all these special effects are gonna but until then guys we're still this here for you okay this is what it is this is what it is this is what it's gonna be <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in to up late with shine Dell. we have a wonderful show for y'all today uh hilarious comedian rodney perry is in the yes. building uh, Chad Shepard, uh, who you may have seen on Set It Off, right? Mm -hmm, Set It Off. He's in the building, but like amazing singer, guys. So we got to just break all into his career. But before we do that, we always have to do the success check-in on Up Late with Sha and Dell. Okay, and Sha, I'm going to let you get started. Because, guys, Sha's been coaching me, so I've got some <laughs> about this coaching. Um well, I mean, just in, within the 24 hours in terms of my success check-in, I definitely would say today was one of those days where I had to put priority in place. You know, I, I'm organized in the sense of like, I know how to get things, you know, together. But, you know, I had something to do prior to this and then I came on and did this. So it was like, and then it was my son's birthday. So to me, it was like making myself realize that I really can do everything. And it was kind of like one of those, okay, no, you can do it. Don't start being like, oh, I'm like, huh. Start putting all that doubt in my mind, and I and yeah. Look what? Guess what? It's here. We're here yeah. doing it. Yeah. So. so that's the main thing. I did so, it. And happy birthday to your little man! Three years. Uh -huh. I know, guys. Yeah. I can't wait till he gets eighteen, so I can tell him how hard his mama <laughs> fought for him to be here. How many <laughs> talks we had on the couch? How many encouragement sessions? You know, that's in addition to the self encouragement sessions. Uh, I hello. can't wait. To let him know. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm trying to film all this stuff. So when you know, because you get old, I always say as a parent, I think back as a child thinking to myself, like, I don't have this stuff my parents wish we actually listened to that I now realize, oh, I wish I listened to too. Yeah. So I, you know, I I don't try to admit that too much, but you know, I realize there's a lot of things they said because they were wiser. <laughs> they knew better. I know. Um, you know, I'm 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 actually turning into my mama right now. You know what I'm saying? The silence that she used to give me, Sha. You know, sometimes I'll be lying to my mama and she'll be looking at me like she would never be like, You are a lie. Cause you know, she realized long time ago, like you just can't argue with people when you when you know the truth. And now I'm doing the same thing. I'm feeling like an old lady out here in these streets. You know, people be like, "No, I'm serious," and I'd be looking at them like, "Oh, okay, I have completely <laughs> like, you know you lie, you know you lie, you stop." <laughs> and that's what, the thing we always say we're not going to do. We become our parents. <laughs> so look, so. Shy, here's my success check. And Shy is trying to get me married off to a white man harder than <laughs> anybody can. And I'm just, you know, so she was like, you got to look at this show, Love is Blind. Yes. So, of course, I looked at the entire show. Guys, the pandemic has really changed me. I am now full fledged yeah, watching it. TV. Like, when people would be like, they binge on shows, I would be like, I'm sorry, what kind of time do you have in your hand? <laughs> season one and be like, oh, I'm almost at season seven now. Like, do you work? You know what I'm saying? 
Exactly. So, but there's only one season, and I did look at it, and I did see the black uh, woman get married to the white man who whisked her away in this big old house, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, and then of course I couldn't even focus on their story because I was focusing on the fact that this show had a blatant homosexual <laughs> the black woman. That's why we can't find a man, y'all, because you hooking us up with homosexual. We want the black man, okay? Netflix, this is gonna be in my letters, guys. Every week I got something to add to my letter. Hi, y'all. How do y'all give the white couples a fighting chance? Okay, you got all of them straight. Everybody on that side is straight. And then it is not like you didn't know because before the black woman came on and before they got onto vacation, the the man says, "Oh, I have a secret. I'm hiding." Yes. yes. You understand what I'm saying? How do you tell the producers that? And the producer <laughs> says to them, "Oh, this is gonna work perfect. She's gonna accept." What kind of desperation do you think we got as black women that we would date? That? Now, now, first of all, when I first saw this man, before I saw he was a homosexual, I thought to myself, wow, he is a homosexual. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I could not. And then he said, well, I have a secret. I'm thinking, certainly, you know, he's been married before. He's fooling the show. But as soon as he said a secret, I knew for a fact he was going to tell me somebody had been deep diving in that butt. Okay? <laughs> now, you tell me somebody been deep diving in the butt, and now you say accept you for who you are. Now, listen, guys. Yes, I do accept you for who you are as a Christian person. We here to love everybody, but no, 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 no. I don't accept you in the bedroom, nigga. This is, come on now, this is homosexual time. You see what I'm saying? Everybody, all the other white couples got a heterosexual fighting chance, and you bring the black woman, and then you show her being the angry black woman. I was so pissed off. Got and, and she got hate mail and everything because but then she trying to make it seem like she was homophobic. Uh, uh I'm not homophobic when it's dealing with people who I want to in my bed. What are you talking about, guys? That? Guys, when it comes to my bed, everyone's a racist. You get who you want in your bed, whether it's you. You understand what I'm saying? When it's time for me to give up my body, there's no such thing as homophobic. Child, let me tell you something. I was like, I can't wait to talk to Shaw about this show. <laughs> I forgot all about give the white man a chance. And then also to the black woman. Now, it didn't seem like I know she's married to this white guy or whatever, but, you know, she she still didn't seem like herself. She didn't seem like, you know, she seemed like a little more hood with her friends, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then when it came to like the white guy, she was like, <laughs> like a lot of that, like uncomfortable <laughs> laughing. And I was thinking maybe it's for the cameras. And then I saw her mama acting the same way. Uh -huh. um, you know what I'm saying? Like her mama has that uncomfortable laughter, but maybe it was the cameras too. But I'm like, no, with your regular black boo, you'll be like, first of all, I, I, like all the things you would do with your hunger, you would do with that. And that's how I feel like. You know what I'm saying? Like all the white people, it off. they could like they could be themselves, but the black woman, she was. She was just like, now this is the man I've been waiting for. Do I want to do it? You know what I'm saying? But like, it doesn't look like, like it's, you know, it, it. I mean, I'm not hating on it. What I'm saying is you don't look like yourself. I think that was her. I think her and a white girl appreciated that part of herself being with him because uh -huh. she, you know, when she is with her homegirl, she's that way. But then when she's with a, a dude and she starts acting that way, like she starts saying stuff to him, but may seem like nagging and judgmental. A white man is like, oh, thank you, dear. So I think that's where she probably, you know, her, her, where she was able to channel that in the way she wanted to. So, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we've got a most awesome show for you tonight here on Up Late with Shot and Dell. We have the most amazing Rodney Perry in the building. Um, I'm going to bring him in, guys, but before I bring him in, I got to show you this. My wife be worried about me. She think I'm gonna meet a woman in one of these shows and run off. I tell her I ain't going no goddamn where. First of all, I can't spring this body on no new bitch. <laughs> no, I'm okay with clothes on, but naked, some bullshit going on up here. <laughs> you know what it is, ladies? Big men don't know they're big. I just found out I was big last week. <laughs> tell you, I found out where to go shoot some basketball. Got there later. I got there. They picking teams. They're like, man, we got you, we got you. <laughs> And we got you, big man. I'm like, big man? Who the fuck is he talking to? I got some clues to let you know you're big if you don't know you're big. 
If you get winded doing everyday activities, I was on my cell phone the other day. My boy was like, nigga, are you running? <laughs> no, actually, I'm standing still. Why would you say that? <laughs> if your bath towel don't fit no more. Remember when you were small, you could wrap your bath towel, walk around the house with no hands? Now you big, you got to hold that motherfucker right here the whole time? You ain't even got the whole towel. You just got the ends of that motherfucker. Your dick be hanging out. You be mad at your lady, baby. You're shrinking these damn tiles. Martin Lawrence presents First Amendment Standard. Oh my God, that was too... <laughs> First of all, let's give it up for Sean's round of applause in front of that. When I, look, when I was uploading the video last night, I immediately turned it on. Like, I turned the volume down. I was like, I do not really even want to watch it to today because you're a Rodney Perry. Let me tell you something. Everybody in my family knows who Rodney Perry. They didn't see him at the front. They didn't see him at the improv. They didn't ask me, do I know him? And when I look at Rodney Perry perform, I like he is one of the people I will sit in the room and watch. Now, you know, as a comedian, we can be way judgmental. I will sit down and I will have a seat and I will watch this brother. And he is just such a good person. Without further ado, guys, welcome to Up Late with Shy and Dale, Rodney Perry. Yeah. <laughs> Rodney, you made yourself laugh on that one. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, you know how you, you had jokes you stopped doing and you're like, why am I doing that? And so, and, and it's a crazy thing, that particular set, I really wasn't going to do that show. Mm. And because um, Doug Williams was hosting that show and I felt like it was whack. They was taking the show from him and um, Dion Cole called me. He was like, right, dude, I want you to do this show. I'm hosting. And and if you're not doing it because of Doug, Doug is still working on the show. And I yeah. got there, Doug was working behind the scenes. And so I was like, how am I going to take a stand for a show? And he ain't taking a stand for himself. So I went on and did it. That's awesome. I wish you could have that conversation with my husband because he needs to know about this time. Like, he, he needs to know. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a PSA. That should be a PSA commercial for black men. Hey, okay. hey, hey, hey let Make me tell sure you something. You we we all used to be small. Yourself. My wife just bought some big ass towels. My wife bought some towels that don't even fit in the little thing we keep towels. It's so big. <laughs> I love it. Hey, y'all was talking about that show. I watched that show. I watched that show. You did, yeah, right? Yeah. I watched the show. It was a good show. And they actually shot here in Atlanta. And uh, one of those, the, the like you said, Dale, the black couple never had a chance. Mm -mm. Yes. And, and they and and it was like. I, they was acting like it was some surprise that this dude was gay. I was like, ain't no doubt in my military mind that this dude is super gay. <laughs> <laughs> like he float, he floated in. Oh, oh, oh. And, you know, and don't get me wrong, not even bashing them or, or gay shaming or whatever they, they say nowadays. But um, like you said, you know, when when you are picking a, a mate, that's something you need to know day one. Yes. Yeah. The my yeah. question to her as a woman, like, I feel like women ignore some of the red flags. Like, you talking to this dude face to face, well, they talk for like some time before mm -hmm. they before they decide on who they wanted. Ain't no way she didn't know. She didn't get no signs. I guess she thought it was, he was being charming. You know, it was coming off as charming. I'm what? charming. <laughs> <laughs> Charming and gay don't go hand in hand. Also, and I feel like this personally, um, you know, Rodney and Sha, that, you know, they put us in this kind of situation and then they'd be like, oh, see how y'all treat the gays? See how, no, this is not how we yeah. treat the gays. This is how we're being treated when it comes to castings and reality TV. Like, why all the black there are so many available black men like the fact that they're they they put it in the air oh they are black men and women this 10 to 1 that is not true the available person for you it's one on one you could not find another person that was just regular straight like he could have been ugly this girl would have been like i love him if he was ugly but you are attractive and a homosexual come on now you know what i'm saying but they like so that show <laughs> Y'all think what'd you say there? <laughs> he was all the way gay too. But 
But you know, this this the thing too. I mean, so I was more mad at the, the little the little white lady that left the dude at the altar. Oh yeah. I was yeah. more mad at her. Yeah. Like, uh, first of all, you ain't that cute. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, little old. Ain't your little old. The little, the little drunk lady that was drinking the whole time with the young dude. Yes. Whoa. Now the black girl should have got with that other young guy. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I feel but like he was, he was a cornball too, though. Yeah, he was a cornball. Well, see, that man was looking at that lady making a hundred G's. That's what he was looking at. He was like, "I'm in love. Whatever this situation, <laughs> I'm in love. I will be here for you. I am a natural stay-at-home dad." Don't you see my heritage? I can be here when you get home with your money. You see what I'm saying? Right. So what I thought we need to do an intervention part of this this show though. Ronnie, don't you think Dale should give a white man a chance? They're they too black power. It ain't gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you, these black dudes, they might want a cougar, but they don't want no black panther. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney. Speaking of relationships, we have to show you a video. Every time we come on the show, we always bring a what the funny, like what what happened here? What would you do? And we got to show you a video from uh, this week's what the funny. Let's go. Cheating with best friend. That's the title of that video. First of all, I like, you know, when I see this man jump from two stories, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's just. <laughs> he already knew he wanted to get that ass whipped. That's why. But I'm talking about like, just go down and face the, the butt whipping. You see what I'm saying? You jumping, you limped off to two stories. And then we didn't show you all of the video, but he winds up running into traffic. They wind up, you know, <laughs> chickens getting in the chase. Yeah. Rodney, why do you think that happened? Well, I know why. why. We, we we all know why it happened. Y'all y'all got that thing. And let me tell you something. Vagina make do some crazy things, okay? <laughs> I don't care if it's your best friend, your worst enemy. If the right vagina, you'll be like, you know what, baby? Whatever. <laughs> That's true. It is so true. I always say in that in that scenario, would you would you have stayed and confronted or jumped off them them steps if that was you? I'd have been jumped. I'd have jumped on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> me if you got a footprint on your face. <laughs> what would you have done to the wife? You know, and, and I already did everything I need to do to her. She already, <laughs> she was in a bathtub. Like, like she, she could have put no clothes on before she came outside and talked to no. me. At he least give her a little respect. <laughs> Yeah. Rodney, you have had such an amazing career. You did uh, Tyler Perry's Medea's Happy Family, right? Uh huh. Okay. Um, you've hosted, been the co host on The Monique Show. You have also been one of the panelists on TV One's Who's Got Jokes. Uh, what do you have coming up? Because I hear a rumor you're in a movie coming up, right? I, I am going to be in a new coming to America. Yeah, uh, super excited about that. You know, Dale, we've been working a long time. You know, what yes. I mean? And um, you know, in this game, sometimes you just need a win. Yes. You know? 
And yeah. you go, you go, you go, you go, you create, you do this, you do that. And you just want to win, you know? Yeah. And so th this movie, this book in the movie was a win. Uh, if, if it ends up, people get to see it, that's another win. If, yeah. If, I, if it helps to put asses in the seats, that's another win. Yeah. So, so that, that's what it's all about. You know, these, these, these wins that we have from, from moment to moment in our careers. And, um, this will be another bridge to take me to another part of my career. Yes. How was it work? Cause coming to a two with, is with Eddie Murphy. Um, I heard you now was in it as well. Cause I had yeah. spoken to her on a different occasion, but like, how was it working on set with Eddie? Like, you know, who, who else, uh, was a person that you really enjoyed on set during the time of filming? Well, it, it, it's so many, you know, first of all, there's a ton of stand-up comedians in this movie. Okay. And the reason I do stand-up comedy is Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Right? I, I saw Eddie Murphy doing on Saturday Night Live and I was like, I want to be that. And so to have him at the as, as the number one guy in this film was crazy. And for him to know who I was. And I I had met Eddie before. But it's another animal, Dale. You know this when you work with a guy, yeah. Then when you just pass in the club or in a, yeah. at a party or something, and yeah. you see him on the set every day. What's up, Roddy Perry? How you doing today, boy? And I'm like, yo. Talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, of course, Arsenio Hall is the coolest man on earth. Okay. You know, he was there. Eddie was there. Uh, all the all the people you remember from the original movies. But then there was people like myself. Um, uh, Tracy Morgan was a, a, a great person to work with every day. Wow. Uh, of course, Lunell. Yeah. Uh, Leslie Jones and I, like, it was crazy because these was my peers. Me, Leslie, and Lunell, we was all in the trenches in the, as Rudy Boots together. Yes. So for us to meet on this film and be all in there at the same time was crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah. I am so, Rodney, I'm so happy for you because, brother, like, Ever since I started comedy, I you were one of the first people I met out here in LA. Every time you didn't even know me, and you'd be like, "All right, young buck, you know, you can get a chance, you know, on my show." You know, you was hosting down at uh, the Savoy. You know, mm -hmm. you had a room there. I mean, you've just done so many great things for other people. I remember mm -hmm. being at the Laugh Factory one time, and you called me out the blue to say, "Hey." Um, Byron Allen uh, has got a production company, and here's the person you need to contact. I'm talking about just out the blue. This is this is like 11 p.m. you know L.A. time, which means it's 2 a.m. your time, and you're just like, hey, I just want to let you know in case you was thinking about producing something. Here's the person That's to awesome. contact. You know, it's just been you know. But, but you know, Dale. I mean, we're not random either. You know, you're my friend. Yeah. And and you know we produce things together, created things yeah. together. So yeah. you know I, I'm a I'm a fan and a friend, and and I, I believe in friendship, and yeah. I, I believe in this game in in helping each other because you never mm -hmm. know when the positions flop. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. Today, today you you might be the main guy. Tomorrow I might be calling Dale for a job. So yeah. I've always understood that you got to treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. That's so great. I mean, what are your um? you know so many comedians coming up so many people get to this point where where they're just like you know if i don't make it by 32 that's gonna be it for me you know and they don't understand that you know it is a real marathon that you mm -hmm. have to you know sometimes you're gonna be running on them, one of those miles and then other times you're gonna be crawling and then other times you get a ride you know for part of the way <laughs> what what are your what, what comes to mind when I say that that you may want to leave with other people? I mean, I mean they can go. I mean, I I'm I'm in this for I'm too far up the road to turn around. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and and of course, Dale, you know, a few years ago I had a stroke. Yes, so I dealt with some health issues, but this is what I learned because you start having these conversations with God, right? And I'm like, God. What do I learn from this? And he was like, What do you want? What have you been doing? Mm -hmm. I spent all my career trying to get way out to the to the success, right? And that thing is always way out. Yeah. And I wanted to get there. He said, he said What do you want now? At that time, I was confined to a wheelchair. I couldn't walk. Oh, I, I want to take a single step. And so God revealed to me that's success. 
Mm. Take a single step. If mm. you can take a single step, you can take a million steps. Oh. You feel me? And yeah. so once 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 I, I I started to understand that 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 then it all made more sense to me, and it helped me break my life down to a more a, a least common denominator. And so uh, I'm still trying to get way out there, but I, I'm gonna take my time and do it one step at a time. How has it been? Mm -hmm. Uh, Sean, do you have any questions? Because I'll just ask him the final question. No, I, would, I mean, I was just going to say, so what is on that list? Has it been a list that you said did something you want to accomplish that you could do with that? I mean, I'm always adding to the list. The list is, is always growing. And, 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 you know, a few years ago, I wanted to write a book, so I wrote a book. You know, oh, my God. You know, That's amazing. So, so. You know, we go through phases, right, Dale and, and Sha. You go through phases like there's phases where you feel real creative, and there's phases where you like, you know, you you feel at a loss. You know, yeah. we're in the midst of a pandemic, and so what to do? You, you you start creating. You create a TV show. You create up late. What do you want to do, Rodney Perry? You want you want to do other things. You create, create, create. And so, uh, I believe in staying kinetic. You know, whatever whatever that whatever that is. And so whenever I'm at a loss, I just try to create something else. I got a podcast I do. I got a book I wrote. I got an audio book I'm about to do for that. I got another book I'm about to do for that. And so it's, it's all goes into staying, staying creative, yeah. man, and keeping yeah. the energy going. Keeping yeah. the energy going. That's good. That's so good. Oh, my God. Um, Real is program. there a projected date on the movie coming out? It was supposed to come out in uh, December, but they pushed it back into March. Oh, good. We're going to need that coming into a new year. <laughs> right. No, and it's going to be great because you know what? I feel like with all the pandemic stuff, I feel like by March, people are going to be like, I'm tired of being, I'm tired of it. I'm yeah. going to the movie. I demand it. Because, you know, I feel like with this, I don't know what your take is on the pandemic, Rodney, but I just feel like, you know, there is no coronavirus on that plane. You see what I'm saying? Like the coronavirus is all the way up until you get to the airport. And then as soon as you get in, you're going to have to tongue kiss somebody to put your bag in the overhead. <laughs> and then you're going to have to ride somebody back to get to your seat. You know what I'm saying? The social distance is strictly for the bathroom area. But once you get past that ticket agent, everybody is humping each other on the butt because so true you know, and and don't forget if you get hungry there's no such thing as corona take the mask right off it's no longer <laughs> if you're hungry or if you need something to drink it, it won't pass food everybody know corona don't want pass food <laughs> corona is hungry and corona is very hungry <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on Update with Shia Dale. I got to get my round of applause ready. Hold on. Here now, we go. Tell everybody where they can find you. <laughs> First of all, let's give it up for Shaz. Give it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> tell yeah. everybody where they can find you, um, you know, best. I'm easy to find. RodneyPerry.com uh, is a website. Rodney Perry Live on all my social media. And... Um, I'm on my book is on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. There it goes right there. Right great moments on my journey. Moments of my journey. I love it. Guys, thank you. Thank you to our guest, Rodney Perry, for joining us today. Please follow him at rodneyperry.com. Um, please follow him on Instagram and don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after we pay the deal. Thanks, Rodney. Up late with Sha and Dell is brought to you by the Gwenna. An Italian leather custom designed high top sneaker by Gwendoria Abram Shoes. Order your pair at GwendoriaA.com. Up Late with Shinedale was also brought to you by Last by K. Janet. Lashes that last. And make sure you join in the party every Monday as we discuss the hottest topics. Hearing what you have to say, follow us at Uplink TV Show on Instagram. Guys, I was just sitting here thinking. I just took the most enjoyable flight on Spirit Airlines. And then I was thinking of something else. Why are people hating on Spirit Airlines so much? You can take a hundred dollar flight from California to Louisiana round trip and make
take it there safely and back for a hundred dollars and you're complaining? <laughs> Talking about you have to buy water on Spirit Airlines. Guys, with all the savings, you can buy two waters. What are you complaining so much for? What are they talking about? I, they didn't have any eyes. You know, you all are needy for a hundred dollar round trip flight. Yes, they are charging you for a baggage fee. Yes, they are. But it's not for your baggage. It's for your bad packing habits. Where are you going with a whole bunch of bags on a hundred dollar flight? Just pick up uh, 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 some spandex, leggings, two brassieres, one, uh, two pair of underwear, one pair of socks, wash everything over for the weekend and make you bring your butt on home. Get on that flight and shut up. Now, if you got any other questions, you know I'm the cleaning lady. I don't clean your home. I clean your life. Put it in the comments. And shut up. <laughs> And shut up. Should be a shirt. Put it in a comment and shut up. Why are first of all? Uh, okay, this is this is the question for the fans, guys. Do you like Spirit Airlines or you don't? It's just yes or no, and tell us why. I'm about to read some of the comments. Sha, let's start with you. Do you like Spirit Airlines or not? I'm the kind of person who lowered my expectations. If I know I got a hundred dollar fight, I have hundred dollar expectations. I mean, that's what you just go into it knowing that, like you don't go in there be like, oh, you mean so I gotta pay for this water? I'm like, no, yes, you paid a hundred dollars for the fight. Everything, everything, the tissue. Are you gonna bear from it's like a a, a, a a corn machine? You're gonna drop in. A, Get tissue to wipe your ass with all of that. Yes. <laughs> I have lowered expectations. <laughs> Let's do the fan check in before we get out of here, guys. Uh, Kareem Smith said, What up from Viva Woo, Las Vegas? Andrea says, Never flew spirit. Andrea, you never flew spirit. You rich mama, you, Andrea. <laughs> right. You American Delta Airlines, you come on now. Come on now. Business class prices you can afford. Let's go. Exactly. Um, uh, let's do it. Uh, uh, Andrea said, The prices aren't cheap. Girl, let me tell you something. Andrea, have you tried to fly right now? Because the prices are very cheap on spirit yeah. airlines. I'm talking about, I went to New Orleans. Round trip for 112, count of 112. Now, see, the secret for me, too, is I put everything in my purse and I get right on that plane. I don't yeah. need anything else. I don't need a change of clothes. I don't need a change of drawers. Guys, I will I will breathe on myself and, and ask the Lord to bless these clothes. <laughs> and then all the essentials that you normally need, somebody got at their house, like lotion. Everybody, black. every house you go to, every black house got a lotion. Yes. You don't need, lotion. You don't need to, yes. everybody should be brushing their teeth. <laughs> guys, and if you need a toothbrush, guys, get that washcloth out and get that toothpaste on that washcloth and get that going. And then when you get in that shower, open up your mouth real wide. That'll be like a water pick. Guys, it's out there for you if you want to try. your finger. Can we not get so high, maybe we don't use our finger to brush our teeth no more? Come no, on. No, guys, everybody, <laughs> this pandemic richness is tripping. <laughs> um, Andrea Levette said Frontier is cheaper. You know what? Frontier, it do be, you know, Frontier can do it. Um, Andrea Levette says, I'm tired of movies. I'm sorry, Clarence, that I didn't see your question before Rodney got out of here. It must have been like a little um, delay that I didn't see your questions because nothing was like popping up. But um, um, we see y'all comments. Uh, <laughs> so we were talking about Love is Blind and Sha hooking me up with, uh, trying to hook me up with white men. And your mama says, I'm white and I barely want to give white men a chance. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about it too is, see, I don't hate on white men. I just like have something that I'm attracted to, but I see attractive white men. We just don't attract each other. Now, the kind of white men that is attractive to me be like that, that kind like 
that country bumpkin, like that redneck white man, something about me, he think he could just take this black booty, honey. He just, <laughs> he approaches me. Like, I'm talking about, like, that's the kind of, like, you know, I don't know, but it's like, we see each other. You know what I'm saying? I'll look at him. That's how you want. <laughs> if it's, if it's going to be, it's going to be some kind of plantation kind of love. Is that what you're trying to say? I think what it is is they honest and I'm honest. We can see, we could oh. be like, now you know our families don't belong hanging out. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Got it. Something about that is just strikes the chemistry. But like we, you know, of course I've never taken it like far. Not to say I've never been with a white, but like I've never taken it like far. But also too, who else likes me is the curly Q. I call them the curly Q Jews, the Hasidic Jews. <laughs> yes, the curly Q Jews. Girl, they are accustomed to big ghetto black butt because they approach me. I'm, girl, do you understand? I'm talking about they lie. They they like, well, you got you got an apartment around here where you living. You living by yourself. I'm like, this man better get him in his top hat and get out of here. <laughs> there, is a, there is some kind of Jewish man chat room going around because this is the second story I've heard what a black woman said to me. <laughs> That this Hasidic Jew then rolled up on her. And I'm like, what? What is that? They, see, what I feel like with the Hasidic Jews is I feel like our women are the same. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, All the women got kids. They grow up in the projects or close to the projects. They be going down to the EBT office. All of them wear hair weaved. You see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. Like if I describe a, a Hasidic Jewish woman, you would be like, "Is that Keisha from up the block?" No, no that's, that's from up the block. <laughs> it's so true. There's a lot of very similarities, other than yeah. our mouths. Other yeah. than our mouths, I don't think we, they popping off like we are. You say other than other than other what? Other than our mouths, our mouths. We, they, I don't think oh. they popping off like we are. Well, uh, you know what? I be when I hear other Jewish comedians on stage. Now, I don't know if they got a Hasidic mama, but I always hear them popping off at the mouth, like they, them being like, "Oh, my mama be popping off at the mouth," like the Jewish mama. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know they got nappy hair too. Okay, so <laughs> so many similarities. Andrea Levette says, "Don't settle." Um, That's not settling. Well, the thing is, if you're getting someone that you necessarily wouldn't get just for the sake of having someone, then that's kind of settling. And maybe Okay, well let me just say this. So going back to the love and bond the love is blind experiment, neither one of them, I mean of course eventually they probably connected to the, the voice dialect and to understand the race. But it it was it was it was washed over once they started to get to know each other. Whereas I'm saying that as black women, we often will cut off the even the, the possibility because of the fact that the color of the person's skin. And I'm just saying there could be somebody who could be directly connected to everything you wanted, and you will cut that person off just because he's not the the hue of a man that you wanted. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Um, first of all, we got more, uh, fan comments going on, said Claire, uh, Clarence says, yes, they do behind doors. Uh, Strictly Tyler says, hey, ladies, hey, Stephen Strickland, that's hey, our executive ladies. producer in the building. Um, Clarence says, please keep it chocolate. Yeah, Clarence, <laughs> yes, I will keep it chocolate. Andrea Levette says, I love like men. Brains and booty. <laughs> Brains Clarence, and booty. No, he got himself a snow bunny. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Clarence said, we were talking about spirit earlier. Clarence says, spirit doesn't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that is our show for today. Thank yes. you so much for tuning in to Up Late with Sha and Dell. I can't thank you guys enough. First of all, you keep hearing that because, girl, we got the time <laughs> on out here. We will be on we will run this show. We are prepared to be on Fox Soul. Okay, and we'll be. And we'll be on Fox Soul. We'll see you guys uh, actually next Monday on IG. If you haven't joined us already on IG, it's a blast on Monday. Um, so make sure you join us every Monday by following us on IG at Uplate TV Show. And also, if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube and our Facebook channels. We'll see you guys next time right here on Up Late with Sha. Hey. hey, 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 this is Sha Hayes and Dale Harrison, and you're watching Up Late TV, TV Show. show. <laughs> <laughs>
you gotta come on over to our channel. We got the hottest celebrity interviews and the funniest comedians on our channel. Well, funny pop, come on, we got the hot topics, pop culture, you just wanna see it all. And we're giving our funny opinion and you will L-Y-A-O. So make sure you come through. And subscribe, 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 comment.